onto someone, and in my case, it was there were several someones all along the way, from the time I was a production assistant to uh, I, I was also a grip for years, and assistant cameraman, cameraman, ultimately director. But you do you kind of make your own luck by just constantly seeking work, and um, that's first and foremost. Of course, showing up on time is it's, it's it's almost as good as showing up early. Showing up early is really. Good. <laughs> it's a, I, I found it's kind of a mentoring business too. I think people who are in it and established want to see other people succeed. And one of the one of the joys that I've experienced is that there may be someone here that I first worked with as a PA and now as an assistant director. Um, and as you go from project to project, you watch the people that you worked with that you, you knew were smart and you knew were going to succeed, and you watch them. Did you have a mentor along the way, or someone that helped create some opportunities? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's important to cultivate that. Yeah, you, you're not, no one's born knowing all this stuff. And, uh, of course, the film schools are great. I, I didn't go to film school, but uh, so I kind of learned everything I think I, I know by doing on the job. But, uh, You do need to be, you eventually find yourself in a position where someone will, you know, through, will, for whatever reason, will, you know, guide you. One, that's all right. I was just going to say one piece of advice I got early on uh, was from a production manager. When I was a PA, he said, get as close, get a job as close to the camera as you can get. So if it wasn't on this job, on the next job, I'd, you know, try and literally, physically try and get the job as close to the camera because that's really, you know, where it's being made. You know, it's great to be, you know, uh, but, you know, you do have to spend that time on the street corner three blocks away, you know, if you're lucky with a meatball sandwich at 2 o'clock in the morning, freezing cold, uh, asking someone not to cross the street at that particular time. Uh, I don't know anybody who hasn't done that. Exactly, you wanted to do. I mean, did you know that you wanted to, you know, have a certain, co you know, career path here? Did you take some chances? You, you know, you did a lot of different things. So we can start. With I you. wanted, ultimately, when I sort of could figure out what was really happening in the business, I wanted to be a cinematographer, mm -hmm. and ultimately became. It took, it took a while. Uh, when I first worked for Merrill, I was camera operator. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I'm going to give it away, but uh, 19. I'm going to say 84. I'm going to say 1984 or so on a TV movie that Merle produced with uh, Lucille Ball. And, uh, and then it was, uh, you know, I don't know how many years after that we worked together. You know, just a few but it's years important ago. to try different things or experiment if the opportunity presents itself. I, I don't know. I don't want to speak for the others. I, I fell into things uh, through hard work, I'll say. I do say so myself, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, for example, I, I never envisioned directing. Uh, the executive producer at the Law & Order at the time insisted, literally insisted, that I do one. Uh, and, uh, after one, yeah, like I, I did more and more. But uh, no, I, 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 I thought I was where I wanted to be a few years okay. until I tried this. You know, uh, I do this. I love it. About you, did you have a, the five-year plan or a, a rough idea of what you wanted? You started in filmmaking with filmmaking. And, you know, I I, probably, I seem like the five-year plan type, but I didn't really have the five-year plan. Um, I did know, it, you know, I, I developed an interest for film when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and and I really just never thought of it as a career, but had had that interest. Um, when I uh, started looking for work in, in the field, I was really interested in, in documentaries and thought I could bring my sort of college skills of researching and writing to be useful in the field of documentaries, and that was how I started out. And my goals evolved. I mean, I, I did that and I loved that, but at a certain point, you know, feature films just seemed like the, you know, the, the, the 
be all and all. So I figured out a way to transition, which is tricky because you can be producing documentaries and then you make that transition in your location managing or assistant location managing in a feature film situation and you have to sort of accept that, that shift. Um, but I just think as I did more and more, I really felt like you know my my natural place was as a as a producer. So. Um, as the technology changes, is the way that you produce TV shows changing? You know, in some ways, you know, we you know, on the on the sidelines, we're looking at the industry. The equipment's getting smaller, definitely much more sophisticated. Does it change the way you produce a show? Um, and how are you embracing this new technology? I mean, Boardwalk Empire, a lot of CGI. We were talking a little bit about, you know, the special effects even on, you know, the character's face. Yeah. One of the characters has got a, a mask. Well, we shoot film in that case. I mean, we do shoot 35 mm -hmm. uh, But a lot of the shows, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've not yeah. shot a show in fi on film uh, yeah. in years. The last mm -hmm. one I did was, and I, I think they still do is 30 Rock. But 30 Rock. I think they still do, but well, I have not like shot a show on film in, in <laughs> five years. Yeah, it, it's been a very I mean, long time. So that is a big change. I mean, it's unusual, actually, mm -hmm. to shoot on film. Uh, I know AMC, I did a pilot for them uh, called Rubicon, and, uh, uh, and that was shot on, uh, uh, they just said, we don't do video, they just shot it on 35, and they just actually insisted on it. But most of I mean, I work on this series, Luck, that, uh, yeah, that was the election. <coughs> and uh, so it's a lot of digital, a lot of, I mean, the use of uh, digital cameras, we even use those kind of guys. The, 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 the Canon, the little yeah. Canon. Yeah, yeah the Canon. We shot a lot of short courses, so we were able to get the Canon, the camera right up to the, you know, just close to the horse and so on. And, and uh, so it's, it's, it really is changing. And the use of uh, special effects is just, uh, you know, boardwalk, as you said, it's just constant. And they've just gotten so extraordinary with it. It used to be all these, you don't move the camera, and they had all these marks yeah, okay. and things, and there was a special effects guy there. And now it's like, nah, fine, you know, whatever, just, and they just leave you alone, and you just shoot it. And then recently I did something where we were combining, like, four different elements, and they just brought it on the set while I was shooting the, the final element. And they said, well, we just cobbled this together, and here was the whole special effects laid out, and we just dropped our piece into it. And, and that, that just never would have happened. You couldn't do boardwalk without a, a, a ton of money, a big, a, several tons of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, really could not, you could not do that show without computer imagery. You just couldn't do it. It's not possible all the time. But you see Am, for example. Um, that's a great example of something that could never have been done. They recreated the old, the old Pan Am terminal. The, uh, the plane, everything is, is all uh, done in green screen and motion control. They're at Steiner Studios, and there's really not much there in the studio. Yeah. Right. It's incredible. Yeah. A lot of green right. screens, and they can be anywhere in the world. And, you know, fortunately, they choose to they be here. They have cameras like strategically placed and all around the studio to give mm -hmm. them perspective. And that's a lot like, I, I assume, a lot like but this they also, did making Avatar. Right. Know, now they, they virtually. And uh, this gives a whole new, you know, that there are many opportunities now for, you know, using this technology, applying it to television that just didn't exist before. So I think that learning how to use this equipment, you, you know, and, and, and applying it creates a whole new opportunity. Mostly in the post-production world, but we're starting to see it more actually, as you said, on a show like Pan Am, that they're using more of the green screens for the actual set. I think what was interesting is as we transition from 35 to, to you know, the 24P, the Lexa, appreciate this best is that you know any one of the camera assistants could if there was something wrong with the anaflex could take it apart and put it back together again. And now they're you know they yeah. have to deal with this electronic and many it's really like trying to fix a computer at this point. Yeah. yeah. You know? right. yeah. And so they've had to relearn. What do you enjoy the most about your job, Alan? <laughs> Aside from the fact that I have it, <laughs> um, you know, I, I very much uh, now. You know, I was funny. I was talking to my assistant earlier uh, about the fact that I, I do like to work alone because I spend a lot of time uh, in preparing for what I do, uh, just planning shots, uh, 
sitting in my living room, you know, and just sort of imagining what the episode will be. But then I like equally being on the set and being uh, uh, with the crew and, and with the actors. And I, I probably because of my theater background, uh, 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 a wayward actor and so on. You know, I I uh, I really like working with the actors. I find that uh, especially uh, well. I mean, if they're great actors, there's not much to do, frankly. I mean. Uh, another director, a friend of mine, Tim Van Patten, and I talked once about, uh, you know, how do you direct an actress like Edie Falco? We're saying, well, you know, we're just sharing stories, and we decided that the uh, best direction for Edie was just to say, Edie, do you want another, uh, <laughs> and, uh, another take? And, uh, so, uh, but but I like actually working uh, with actors who are either less experienced or less skilled or whatever. I find it an interesting challenge to try to get a I think that's just interesting to me. It's like a big puzzle uh, for me uh, every day when I show up. And I come very, very well prepared. I like to plan everything in advance. But then, it, you know, invariably it changes because something's not what you're, you know, the door is not where you thought, whatever. How about you, Meryl? What's the approach to the day on the set? I think no two days are alike. I think every day is a challenge. Uh, uh, there are some terrible days and there are some wonderful days. But <coughs> wonderful not just because you've made your day, but you've watched something miraculous happen in front of the camera. Uh, you've watched the souffle rise. Then you've, uh, you know, you might be working in the West Village and you have a walk away lunch and uh, <laughs> have a nice lunch. And, uh, or, you know, um, not that long ago, in fact, it was, I don't think Gus directed that episode, but it was a series we were doing. Uh, we were working in the, the park between the, uh, Brooklyn Bridge and Manhattan Bridge, we lit the base of both of them. Uh, the city was sparkling in the background you know, with the river in front, and a late snowfall started. And I thought it just doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just to add to that, I remember uh, coming home at 3 in the morning from having worked on The Sopranos and having finished an episode. Usually, we always say that when you finish an episode, you have like a thousand yard stare. You know, you, you buy a day or two where no one can make you do anything because you, you, you know, survive. And, uh, uh, but I just remember taking a cab across the three in the morning and seeing the city there and thinking, you know, this is the best job in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, you have a 100th episode coming up, yeah. and that's a milestone in television. And you've actually seen you know, a whole group of young people grow up on this show and become big stars. That's not my favorite part of my job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a nice part. Um, well, I mean, the 100th episode is, is very exciting, again, because I've never done television until the show. I didn't realize even what a big milestone that is. But it's very exciting, and, uh, you know, the, the network and the studio are, are, you know, heaping praise upon us in a rare contrast to their usual mode and uh, <laughs> and throwing us a big party and it, you know all, that's that's wonderful and it's it's wonderful for the party is really designed for the cast and the crew you know to really honor their their efforts and achieve in achieving that so that's that's a great thing but um you know I my favorite thing is a, a, is this version of what you've said I mean it, it is a, a gift to be able to um, you know, explore this city as your job. You know, I, I, I think of my father who used to drag us all over the city, like exploring and finding things, and the restaurant that was through the antique store that was down the, you know, like all this crazy stuff. And that, you know, was really part of how we grew up. And now I kind of get to do that as, as my job. And it's very, I love to explore, and so it's it's just really fun to always be exploring new things. And I also love to work, you know, with the writers and an outline and script to write. And really, kind of, how are we going to manufacture this? How are we going to sort of pull this part into pieces and figure out how to put them back together? You know, even more so than what they intended. So I love that process. But challenging working with a young staff that has really blossomed and become yeah. quite famous and now going off yes. and making movies. <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, uh, <laughs> they evolved in the first half of the season. All of our cast were off doing movies, which we felt it was important to allow them to do because they are at that point in their career where they're getting these offers and they want to do it. And 
We want them to feel happy about being on the show for as long as possible. So it's important to enable that and just, you know, created a lot of production complexity, but it was necessary to just kind of work through that thing. Why don't we take some questions from the audience? Um, I think there are microphones on both sides, so please come up and state your name first and then ask your question. Hi, my name is Wendy, and I'm a freelance writer, and I also do a blog about African American pop culture. I wanted to ask the panel if um, there is any sense of responsibility to reflect the multiculturalism um, shooting in New York um, in an authentic way. Um, among people of color, there's always been kind of that complaint of, for instance, friends where they supposedly lived in New York, and obviously it was shot in LA.